all right people welcome to part two of my video um it's a few days later now and a quick update of what has happened um i decided just to get a super cheap uh timing belt for 15 bucks and i went to the junkyard and i got a new camshaft sprocket um i'm gonna just slap those on and uh also the rocker arms underneath the valve cover and uh i'm gonna not put anything else back on because basically i'm gonna retire this vehicle like i mentioned and to retire it it only needs to be able to start on its own power and move just a few hundred feet so i have another vehicle um with compatible parts from this engine so I'm basically gonna just part this vehicle out as much as I can, um, but just enough so that it can still start up and move a few hundred feet. So right now the water pump's gone, the alternator's gone, all the drive belts and the hoses are gone. But um, that being said, I still decided to do this video because uh, I really feel like it can help someone in a dire situation if they're in a very lo remote location away from all possible help um, what I've concluded is that it this is possible if you have the right configuration on your engine and the right tools and techniques so I'd like to share with you guys um, a few pointers of how to make this possible um, and the reason it wasn't possible on my engine, the reason I was only able to turn it half a revolution before it started skipping teeth is because my crankshaft has a very small uh, tight clearance on the bottom. So once the zip tie gets underneath there, let me show you, it starts binding up. So... And that's when it starts skipping teeth. So if you're lucky and your crankshaft has a bigger clearance, then this definitely could be possible. Um, when you're doing this, also you want to make the smallest hole possible. And very important, you want to do it at least two or three teeth into the belt. Because if you do it too close to the edge, the belt will rip out from the zip tie. Uh, the other pointer is um, preferably you would want to use a steel zip tie like I've been using because the head of the zip tie is like half the thickness of the plastic zip tie and of course it's much stronger. Um, and then Basically, what I did is I got a flathead screwdriver and I pressed on these valley areas of the belt to make the zip tie conform to it. And then you can use some pliers or a hammer to flatten that head as much as you can. Um, and the reason um, this is much easier to do on an accessory belt like a fan belt or an ac belt is because you're basically using the factory tensioner to tension up that zip tie but in this situation i have no tensioner i bypass these pulleys in the side because the camshaft sprocket is gone um, and it is possible to run a v6 on three cylinders especially if it's an older vehicle so that's why um, I was uh, hoping that this would work on my engine and I'm just basically connecting two pulleys together. Um, so if you're in that kind of situation, um, you're going to want to tension that zip tie as tight as you can because I don't know if any of you have felt uh, a timing belt before that's um, properly installed it is very tight um, so you're gonna want to get lineman pliers or a vice grip grab the end of the zip tie 
and then get a flat head, put it up against the head, and then pull in opposite directions to make that zip tie as tight as you can. And please be careful because if those pliers slip off that zip tie, your arms are going to launch back and you're going to bust up your knuckles. Don't ask me how I know that. But um, that's basically it. Uh, I hope no one runs into this kind of situation, but if you do, I hope uh, this helped and I hope you guys can share.